doing the new kits. For those of you joining us, nice uh, black and white with some blue accents there, the silhouette of the Great Lakes. Digging those. Thomas Zander waiting for an actual answer. Yes, we are ready before going in. A quick kill for Michigan State. Barry Butler gets a kill on Gutierrez in the middle there. And there's a ball kind of in the middle and Michigan State has the numbers. And Michigan State definitely came out ahead on that run up. DQ McLean with the first throw long, then Owen Israels responds. Clean block from Barry Butler, but that's a nice, uh, good bounce back for Grand Valley because they didn't have to give up the ball after making that throw at all. Ben Smart at the top of your screen. He'll make the throw, miss low on Alec Dean. Alec Dean misses Matt Budai, and good hold by Matt probably as he was kind of alone up there. Ooh, that kind of sounded, sounded like two hits. I trust Barry, I think he blocked it into the ground. But some nice throws nonetheless. You can see both these teams on their reset throws. They are very close and very crisp. Marks with the throw wide. Ooh, DQ kind of no looks near Owen Israels, who he'll reset the clock and get back. So minute gone by, a lot of, lot of posturing, just trying to feel each other out here right now. Kind of like two fighters squaring up, just sort of light jabs. See who makes the first mistake, who makes the first move. Fido, the freshman, made the throw, and then Ben Smart retaliated, but a nice block by Alec Dean. So Michigan State, early ball control here. Early ball control for Michigan State. They'll control the middle area right now. Jack Gerling, little throw. So, oh, and that ball, sorry, that was off the, uh, off the screen. I didn't expect it to go that far, plus all the action is here, but Adam Arnold, that throw got to the second level, and he was able to make that catch. Josh Kramer misses a catch and gets taken out in the middle there, so. A lot of action right now. Ben Smart gonna lead the charge at the top of your screen. He's gonna go and fire. This is Alec Dean and so does Matt Budai. They just couldn't find a way to hit him there. Ooh, nice, nice blocks. Way to get low by Owen Israels there. They're gonna be, he's gonna be that guy that if Grand Valley wins, it's because he's making a name for himself. Like he's gonna be one of those guys to compliment Ben Smart and Tyler Peach and get a lot of their kills, I think. Right, Marks with a nice, Marks playing very active out there, a nice block. He had a lot of catches against Platteville. He'll make the throw on Paddock. Ryan Paddock was a freshman All-American and he, he blocked it into himself. It made the sound of it. He disagreed, but he'll take the out. Ref was all over it, so. All right, Grand Valley gonna play baseline and now they'll charge, but the counter had already come on a cross. Looks like the scoreboard got taken out, but we're still good there. Tyler Peach draws a throw from Gerling. And now Michigan State actually, you haven't seen this yet today. They're down to only two balls, now three. So Mich uh, Grand Valley was able to get ball control. Still maintaining ball control, six to four now. Tyler Peach made that throw near Gerling and then will retreat, force, force them up. And here's where Michigan, or Grand Valley wants to play. They want to do, they want to play their transition game. Ooh, Tyler Peach, you can see DQ pointing. Ooh, he said Tyler got away with one there. DQ almost caught that, or thinks he should have caught it anyway. So, Fidoa. Fires away, Ben Smart. Ben Smart and Alec Dean just going at each other. Ben Smart got caught running backwards, no blocker there, and now he's buried in the outline, and that's a big get for Michigan State. We're talking about some of the keys to the game being uh, protecting the studs for Grand Valley. Someone else is gonna have to step up now. Marks just misses the catch, Tyler Peach gets him there. And hear Ben Smart scream and get back. So we'll see what Michigan or what Grand Valley can dial up without Ben Smart on the court. Oh no! Jack Gerling with a, a rare mistake. You don't see him make that mistake often where he was trying to throw a cross and just nowhere's near where he wanted it. All right, 
Michigan State, they're slowing down the pace. Barry Butler will solo throw in the middle. Tyler Peach resets. Cross by, cross by Jack Gerling. That's a freshman that he took out there, Eli Walcott. And that's just, that's an experience. He got caught sleeping a little bit. Can't have those mistakes if you're Grand Valley and you want to pull this one out. So five minutes gone. Fairly evenly matched game right now. So Grand Valley already showing more development than they had before. Now Matt Budai throws a catch to Fidoa and that brings in Josh Kramer. So good little good block there by Owen Israels. There's a ball in the middle here. Tyler Peach will grab that. So Grand Valley in risk of getting down on the 10 clock here. They've only got six players left to Michigan State. So it looks like nine or 10. And Fidoa, who tried to turn and make that catch a little too late, and he still had a ball in his hand as well. So they got away with one a little bit there. And so Alec Dean pump faking at the top. He's going to make the throw. And Xander is saying that that was ground. Aaron Pope almost just threw a catch to Kramer, one of the best catchers in the league, captain for Michigan State. Gerling's going to throw the cross. Aiden Jacobs was waiting for it, but that might have been about one of the most catchable throws that, that he's going to throw. And Barry Butler takes out Owen Israels in the middle there. Another big kill. All right, Grand Valley's got numbers to get this ball. Cross throw blocked by Aaron Pope there. Ella Gonzalez gonna make the throw. Girling evades and then we'll slowly walk it up here. Michigan State content to throw it, or slow it down a little bit, excuse me. Girling with a throw, Gonzalez with the counter in between Butler and Girling. So, if you're looking at Michigan State, who they got on the court right now, they've got probably four of their overtime six players right now, and that that could be the difference in this point. Oh, and the ball's over. Mason Smith, the freshman. Mason Smith missed the mark with that throw here, and you got to believe that the team throw will be coming at Tyler Peach. So first in the queue looks to be Gutierrez, who's a sophomore. Just of note, in case Tyler is able to reel one in here. Michigan State still has eight players and now all 10 balls. Grand Valley down to five players. No balls, so no clock right now. But when they do, when they do get uh, ball control or balls back, uh, they'll be on the 10 clock. So clocks are a little off, 17.30 to go. I'll start them when the official game clock reaches here. So Mason Smith, the freshman, gets tagged with the team throw there. Surprised they didn't go after Tyler Peach. Aiden Jacobs with a nice block right in front of your screen. Or sorry, at the top of your screen. Alec Dean refusing to give up the line and refusing to give up that ball. And Gonzalez gets taken out in the corner. So Michigan State still with eight players to Grand Valley's three. Aiden Jacobs with a nice accurate reset throw. Aaron Pope slows him down with the pump fake. Tyler Peach with a throw and a dodge. All right. So you've got Aiden Jacobs, Aaron Pope, and Tyler Peach left for Grand Valley. Michigan State's got more players that I'm just going to list off right now. Gerling with a throw. Tyler Peach blocks and then counters. They're wanting him to use, wanting Jacobs to use the clock a little bit here. Got to be careful not to throw a catch or anything. Not sure why Aiden Jacobs, I don't know if he needed to make that throw there. Nine minutes gone by. First half. Michigan State trying to jump out to a 1-0 lead here. They've got an eight to... They've got an eight to three player advantage. Erling with one of his patented cross throws. Just misses Aaron Pope by a little bit. He's a small target in the middle there, so he's, he's pretty elusive for Grand Valley. He'll patrol the middle, pump fake, throw. 
Ooh. Oh, Xander saying it. Thomas Xander saying ground first. Okay. It's hard to tell if he said it hit the ground first or if it was it hit him and then the ground. So Tyler Peach looks like he's got a beef and thinks he was out there, but play on. All right. He's Sterling will lead the charge. Nice block by Aiden Jacobs, and then he'll pump fake. Doesn't want to just give up all that time quite yet. Ten minutes gone by. Game three of the day. Number five, Grand Valley hosting number one, Michigan State. Still knotted at zero. Ooh, that didn't quite cross the line, I don't think. And then Tyler Peach throws towards the middle, and it gets caught, leading Aiden Jacobs alone. And he is called out. And it took a little while. Michigan State, 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Michigan State takes a 1-0 lead. First half here. And the crowd, the crowd is getting into it now. is just loving this game right now. Both both sides cheering at a go green, go white. Got a lot of fans here today. That was a well-played first point, if you ask me. Both teams had their positives and negatives. If you're Grand Valley, you feel a little bit better about that one than you do the first time they played. But uh, I think if Grand Valley just cleans up a couple of their mistakes, I, you know, Ben Smart getting taken out and buried in the outline there early kind of killed them. You don't want to be a one horse team, but they got to protect him. Um, Michigan State just made more plays, a few more catches there. Um, I don't know if Grand Valley wasn't paying attention when Fidoa feasted against the Pioneers, but uh, he hasn't stopped feasting and they're, they're making catches. So we'll see what Grand Valley, uh, what adjustments Grand Valley makes here. 1-0 Michigan State, first half, 14-46 to go. Thomas Zander, head ref, will get him started, and we're off, and Barry Butler gets taken out by Gutierrez on the run up there. So Grand Valley doing what the Pioneers couldn't quite do, and that was um, and that was actually stick with Michigan State on the run up there. So there goes Fidoa. Ben Smart going to charge. He's out by himself, and Josh Kramer with the catch. And Owen Israel gets is taken out. All right, Tyler Peach with the catch. And ben Smart's right back in. All right, so Owen Israel's first in the outline. Ben Smart gets caught right back in after throwing that catch to Kramer. So that's fortunate for Grand Valley. No, no harm, no foul kind of thing. That Budai with a nice block. Same with Tyler Peach here in front of your screen. And Grand Valley with ball control. Ooh. Tyler Peach takes out Kramer with a cross throw and he's loving it. Matt Badai gets taken out, but one thing I'm noticing early, Grand Valley has targeted Alec Dean and they are coming up, coming up empty every time right now. So they've got to be careful. Like Michigan State is not a one horse team. You take that out when you can get it, but don't force it. Michigan State kind of posturing in the middle here. Marks with a pump fake, DQ through, and there, now they get Alec Dean out. Tyler Peach just misses Fidoa, so this is the best start Grand Valley's had. Michigan State will kind of reset here, control the middle, slow it down. Ooh, ben Smart just misses Butler, nice help by Mason Smith to cover for Ben. They're gonna make sure Ben Smart's always got a ball to protect himself. He's a good catcher, but he's more valuable to them throwing, so. Gonzalez with a nice throw, just good block by Marks, and now he'll come up firing against Aaron Pope, who returns fire to no avail. Darnell needing some help there, but 
Josh Hill says retreat, retreat. It's going to be their throw anyway. So halfway through first half. Uh, ben Smart gets Nick Fidoa there. Oh, and Marks gets taken out by Gonzalez. And a catch by Aiden Jacobs in the middle. takes out freshman Zach Van Fleet, who thought he had Tyler out before that, but he's got to just play on. Didn't get the call and it cost him. If you guys aren't watching this game right now, what are you doing? Like the, like the video, share the link. Everybody deserves to be watching this one. There's a lot of chirp in between. Ben Smart, Kevin, Barry Butler threw from the corner. Alec Gonzalez blocked it. Grand Valley gonna go all the way back. Grand Valley has eight players to Michigan State six right now. Both teams. Uh, it's gonna be Michigan State's throw. So Barry's gonna make the long reset throw. Gonzalez immediately returns fire. And McLean and Pope, same. Each team going to try to just force a mistake out of the other right now, it seems like. Michigan State. Michigan State has... Uh, there was the throw. That one's good. But, um, Michigan State can't afford to lose another player. They'll go down on the 10 clock. I think they know it, and they're playing safe right now. Less margin for error, despite having a one nothing lead. Tyler Peach with just kind of a little get-me-over throw there, just... Um, all right, so, DQ McLean spiked one in front of uh, Tyler Peach, who then threw a cross. So neither team really wanting to, to come up and make a mistake. Tyler Peach might have got away with the throw there. Michigan State is very upset right now. There is. That is just. That is a brutal call for Grand Valley right there. It did not look like a throw from up here that Tyler Peach had made. Shot clock said it was good. Had Raff said, no, it's not. Overruled him. And now Michigan State has the opening that they were looking for with 10 minutes to go. Grand Valley still has the numbers here, so if they can elude an initial team throw and get a few balls back on their side, they can minimize the damage. All right, so the captains are talking right now with the head ref. There's just a little bit of discrepancy over the call right now, so Tyler Peach had made a throw. Michigan State didn't believe it was a throw. They kind of threw at the same time. Um, it has to be in that legit throw zone, and Tyler's was not. So the ref, the head ref, uh, overruled the shot clock counter. Big break for Michigan State. Grand Valley still has the man advantage, but we'll see. We're missing some key guys right now. Two of their best arms in Ben Smart and Owen Overworld are on the outline. So Michigan State is going to come up. Valley hands team here. If they can get it. Still no throw. Okay, now Grand Valley will have a clock. You have to have three balls on your side. Counts should be about even. Because they threw the two balls, did not establish a shot clock for Grand Valley. They threw the third ball, which then makes it a live clock for Grand Valley. So about even. Mason Smith will reset there. That's a good throw from a freshman there. DQ McLean with a throw. Eli Walcott retaliates from the top of your screen. All right, so Grand Valley is kind of, kind of, they're content to stay on their back line until they can get a few more balls here. All right, nice exchange up at the top there. Nothing doing for either team on that one. Aaron Pope just misses Salisbury at the bottom of the screen. 
Grand Valley has three balls. They will have a clock. Michigan State not able to capitalize on the balls over just yet. Aaron Pope with a nice dodge. And a nice kill by Tyler Peach. Takes out Salisbury, and with that, Michigan State now drops to the 10 clock. Good point in the chat saying, saying the counters, the, the shot clock counters need to be counting out loud during the whole play, all the way through a ball's over, so everybody knows what's going on. Uh, Mason Smith gonna charge. DQ McLean hitting the chest. That's a freshman taking out a very experienced senior there. And DQ is one of those guys who doesn't really drop his blocking ball either, even to make a catch. And now Grand Valley gets another kill there. And that's what they were hoping for. That's Grand Valley dodgeball right there. Transition, transition, transition. Adam Arnold, a little confusion. He makes a good safe throw. Barry's throw missed the mark. That one's better. Right in front of Tyler Peach. Bounced in front of him now, so. Oh, first Winston cannot do that. Because that brings in player of the year candidate, Jack Gerling. And suddenly, Michigan State right back in this one. All the momentum was with Grand Valley. And ooh, nice throw by Aaron Pope there near Barry Butler's feet. But Grand Valley maintaining a 7-4 player advantage. But if you're Michigan State and you've got Gerling back on the court, a fresh Gerling now, you're feeling pretty good. Quick throw. No! Bad throw by Gutierrez. Just hung it. And I can't tell if Aaron Cole. Maybe Eli Walcott's going to have to come up and make a throw real quick here. Ooh, Gerling. Gerling with the, ooh, Tyler Peach with the block there. Gerling kind of slipped, they couldn't take advantage. So Butler, high throw. Just Grand Valley throwing too many high balls right now. Michigan State suddenly, they know they can win this point. They've got three of their captains out there. Gerling with the trade, not a trade, but exchange and throws and he gets the better of that one on Gonzalez. And suddenly advantage Michigan State you got to feel good about this. you got three of your overtime six players out there. Grand Valley's maybe got one of theirs. Ooh, Tyler Peach misses, and then, all right, Grand Valley gets bailed out there. Woo! And then Tyler Peach gets taken out. So four on four. You've got a lot of experience on the court right now for Michigan State when you look at Kramer and Gerling, you've got one of the best throwers and one of the best catchers. Oh my lord, what a catch by Kramer. That's what that guy does nonstop. And now Gerling gonna come up, lead the charge. He'll make one solo throw. Mason Smith counters back. Grand Valley down to three players, Michigan State. They've got Oh, I didn't even realize that brought in Alec Dean. That's another overtime guy for them, so. Oh, Dean, Dean got taken out, it looks like there. I didn't see quite what happened. All right, Grand Valley hanging tough. I, if you're them, you, you might just try to get this to halftime. Five minutes left. Wow, another ball's over. Again, I didn't hear the count, they kind of played on, so it was hard for me to pick that one up, but Grand Valley, yet again, another ball's over. So Michigan State, now there's a timeout for Michigan State. Kevin's gonna want to talk it over, because at one point it looked like they were fighting for their life not to let Grand Valley come back and tie it. Now the shoe's on the other foot, and Grand Valley's fighting for their life just to get this to halftime, a one-point game. Uh, if you're Michigan State, you've got some big arms in. You got Gerling, you got Kramer, Barry Ball, who, like I said, Becca Wynn was telling me pregame, this guy's going to be a freshman All American and one of the future foundational members of the team. So, so 
It's a big spot for these guys here. Your Grand Valley right now, you've got Ryan Paddock, who's on the freshman All-American list last year, Aaron Pope, you have freshman Mason Smith, who's had a pretty good point so far, the second point. It's a big point for these guys. Crowd trying to get Grand Valley back into this one here. Advantage MSU right now. One thing of note here, all three of these guys for Grand Valley can catch a little bit, and first in the outline is Owen Israels. Unfortunately, all four of these guys from Michigan State can throw a little bit, so we'll see what they dial up. They're gonna pump, and then Gerling. Gerling drew the look, and then the cross got Aaron Pope on the backside there, so that was well designed by Michigan State, kind of that pinch play coming in from either side. Oh, Ryan Paddock just misses the catch. He wanted it too. That was a good look from him there. Like Gerling just keeps it off his body. I, I don't know that anybody has. I don't know that anybody has a better kill death ratio in the league right now than Gerling. This guy is just money. He just misses wide. It crosses around Mason Smith, the freshman. Nice accurate throw for the reset there. Kramer's going to throw one just to get the clock over. Mason Smith is going to... Yep. That was a safe throw there. Throw it at a guy with two blocking balls. And he gets tagged there. So we got conflicting go green, go white, go blue, go white cheers here. The, the crowd is really into this game. 2-0 Michigan State. They come back in that point. That was a point that I think Grand Valley, they really needed that one. Um, and if you're Michigan State, that just shows how deep you are. Uh, they, they were on the brink a couple times there and just timely catching. And then when you get a guy like Gerling in who can just, who can just pick people off left and right and left and right, um, that, that's bad news for the opponent, in this case, Grand Valley. So we're gonna actually roll this 343 that you see on your clock over to the second half right now. So stick with us. We got about five-ish minutes and then we'll get the second half going here. We're gonna put 28.43 on the clock right now. 3.43 from the first half will roll over inside of four minutes there. Michigan State up two nothing right now on Grand Valley here in Allendale. Grand Valley had their chance in that second point there. Michigan State refusing to let them take it though. A lot of timely catches, some nice counters. Michigan State's got everything working for them right now. like some of the captains and the refs here will have a little confab at center court. Ooh, we went too far. So 28-43 will be what's on the clock to start the second half. For those of you just joining us, uh, third game of the day, Grand Valley Gauntlet 9 here, live Fieldhouse, Allendale, Michigan. Number one, Michigan State. Looking to take another one from Grand Valley. They're up two to nothing. Grand Valley number five, host team right now. Michigan State came out, took them about 10 plus minutes to get that first point. It was very methodical. They just kind of chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. Grand Valley came out very strong in point number two. Uh, had their chance, had Michigan State down on the 10 clock with still eight players left. And really the momentum shifted with that uh, balls over there. Tyler Peach kind of made a cross throw. It wasn't close enough. There was some confusion. It took them a minute to sort it out. Once they got it sorted out, they called the balls over. Michigan State didn't immediately capitalize, actually, but then there were some catches in there. 
and they just kind of bled Grand Valley out. It went from eight on four advantage Grand Valley to Michigan State finishing with five or six left and closing Grand Valley out with under four to go. So if right now Michigan State is just, there's, there's no holes in that lineup. You get them down to four players and you think, okay, here's where Grand Valley gets back into it. And Michigan State just says, nope, sorry. So if you're Grand Valley, you got to feel a little bit better about that second point. You had your chances. Um, they were a catch or two away maybe from, from being able to pull it out or at least getting into halftime only down by one. You had Owen, Matt, and Ben like next consecutively in the queue for you. But uh, close doesn't really matter right now. Grand Valley's got to find a way to get a point off this team. If you're Michigan State, you just keep doing what you're doing. You are off to the most dominant start to a season just about anybody's had in a long time in this league. So, All right, so both teams are huddling up here. We're just about to break. Get ready to start the second half. Michigan State will switch sides now. Michigan State will be on the left side moving to the right. Grand Valley will be on the right side of your screen moving left here. Twenty-eight forty-three to go. Second half action. Marquee matchup of the day. Number five, Grand Valley hosting number one, Michigan State. Depending on the seating, depending on how things go, could be a national title preview. Going to get a cough drop and a swig of Verner's here. A little trick of the trade. Keep this, keep this voice ready to go. We're not done yet. Got plenty more action. Be sure to. Be sure to like the, like the video, share the post, subscribe to the page. We're trying to get our subscribers up to 1,000 here for the NCDA account. We would love to have you guys follow us and be able to follow all the live action every weekend that we have a tournament. Got a question in the chat. Do I think Grand Valley can make a comeback? If so, how? Well, they're gonna have to avoid those uh, costly mistakes with the catches. Uh, that was really what turned it around. There were two catches thrown once Grand Valley got the advantage. It really turned the point on its head. Um, if they can clean that up, I do think that they can, they can come back. In this league with the newer rules, 12 on 12, it's a faster paced game. A two point lead is not safe. Whether they can do it, we'll see. Grand Valley's got a lot to prove right now. Just because you're the defending national champion, that was last season. And we're off. Second half action. Grand Valley gauntlet nine. Grand Valley comes away with a very good start on the run up there. No kills, but they got ball control. And now they'll charge right to left. Ben Smart going to make the first throw just wide of Alec Dean. Gary Butler with a throw toward Owen Israels. Owen Israels is the marquee guy in the middle there for Grand Valley now. So he'll play opposite of Barry. Those two will be going at each other all game long. Selfishly, I would love to see this one go to overtime. Ha, that's just because I'm a fan of dodgeball. Matt Budai with a quick cross. Alec Dean with a throw. Ben Smart's going to block it and keep ball control. Ben Smart with a cross throw. Catches Matt Barrable sleeping there. That's a veteran player catching a freshman off guard there. Michigan State will slow the pace down a little bit, get their throw set up. It looks like it might be girling at the top. There it is. Tyler Peach retaliates, misses just low on marks. So Grand Valley was pleading that that wasn't a throw. They wanted to be able to get a little a little more ball control here for Michigan State to make another throw to no avail. Marks with a high throw near Gonzalez who retaliates at the top. 
Butler throws. Owen Israel retaliates near Fidoa. Couple throws being exchanged in the middle here. Just once again, a little bit of posturing to start the point here. Minute 40 gone by. Each team trying to feel each other out. If your Grand Valley clock's not a factor yet. We're down two. Nice throw by Gerling. And DQ gets taken out. Mason Smith with the team catch, but then Fidoa takes out Ben Smart, who got caught laying on the ground. He kind of did a splits there. I shouldn't say laying on the ground. That was an athletic move he made, kind of doing the splits and just couldn't quite get up there yet. Uh, Mason Smith did get the team catch, so that's going to bring in uh, it's going to bring in Hurst Rimson, who had a good game for them against UWP. They'll need him to step up here. Catch by Fidoa. More like Fistoa, am I right? That was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. All right, Gerling gonna kind of control things up at the top with Marks blocking for him here. They're just gonna probably keep going back to that one. Marks makes the throw and then Marks catches the counter. They're not calling it. Gonzalez thought it bounced maybe, nope. All right, so Marks will get credit for another catch there, him and Fidoa. Still out seeing who can uh, First Rimson throws another catch, but I was gonna say Marks and Fidoa having a little competition. Who can make more catches on the day? They need to get a ball into Owen's hand there, protect him. Tyler Peach with a nice block on the throw from Gerling. Oh, Mabudai kind of sailed one there. He's lucky that, that one made it to the second level, but wasn't near anybody. Grand Valley playing good complimentary ball there to at least get that, and they do have ball control. Oh, they're gonna say that's not a throw by Israel, so he's gotta give up two there just to reset the clock. Now what you're trying to do if you wanna come back here. Aiden Jacobs with a good low throw in front of Fidoa just out at the screen. Ooh, they thought, they thought that Alec blocked that into himself. Tyler wants that one back, but not gonna get the call. Play on. Oh. Michigan State's trying to say that was a team catch. They're hard to tell on screen exactly what happened, but they're gonna call it a team catch, it looks like there. Grand Valley fans beefing right now over that. Oh, and Owen Israels gets caught. He was trying to charge Gerling, and he got crossed by Butler there. That's a big out for Michigan State, and suddenly if you're Grand Valley, you've got a lot of young players left on the court. There goes Fidoa. This is just by Aiden Jacobs. Aaron Pope got taken out at the top of your screen there. Aiden Jacobs with a big catch. That'll bring in Ben Smart. I don't think anybody got taken out from Grand Valley there in that exchange. So Ben Smart's back. Michigan State, though, still comfortable with 10 players in, maybe even 11. 11. So. Fido out with a throw. That was close. They're calling it good. Tyler immediately responded with a throw of his own to reset the clock. So it'll be Michigan State. They'll control the neutral zone right here. Matt Budai takes out Jack Gerling. That's a big get for them. And now Alec Dean gets taken out too by Ben Smart. He drops to that sidearm angle a little bit and slips it under Ben, uh, Alec Dean, excuse me, Alec Dean's block. So a little bit of momentum shifting towards Grand Valley. We'll see. Ben Smart. And then Fidoa takes out Ben Smart. And Fidoa gets countered. So if you're Michigan State, you probably like that trade a little bit. As good as Fidoa's been, they got Ben Smart out again. So that's good for Michigan State. Grand Valley still with six on the court, in danger of going on the 10 clock. Eli Walcott let that one sail a little bit. 
he's lucky that nobody was home for the catch there. All right. Mm. 22 left, second half. Michigan State hanging on to a 2-0 lead right now. Grand Valley was threatening, but some of the momentum got taken away. Aiden Jacobs with a nice counter from the middle to the sideline there. Now Barry Butler is going to come up. He's going to pump, wait for some help. He's got Hackman and Marks flanking him. Barry out here just counting players. He's like, ooh, who's next? Who's next? All right, so Kramer, they put two at him. Neither one, neither one hitting. Slowed down. The crowd has been crowd has been silenced just a little bit. It's like Michigan State sort of waiting. They want Tyler Peach to make the move first. He throws. And Kramer sails one past freshman Eli Walcott there. Kind of a sidearm, almost no look away from his body. Matt Budai goes all the way across. And then it looks like Barry got taken out in the middle there. So that's a big out for them. So we've got six on six now. I'd say each team's got some of their marquee players on the sideline to be sure. Abadai winds up, just misses wide in the middle there. Grand Valley will retreat to the baseline. Michigan State with a slight ball control. Player is the same. Marks, that shouldn't be a throw, but then he got tagged, and then Arnold gets tagged. Okay, so that might not have been a throw by Marks. Grand Valley still just kind of went, and, and now Grand Valley gets the ball as well. With 20, 20 minutes, 22 seconds. And now we've got a timeout Grand Valley as well. So not only was it a balls over for Grand Valley, timeout. They know they've got an opportunity here to capitalize and they don't, they wanna make sure that they're using, taking advantage of their timeout and getting their, uh, getting their play set. We'll see. So when Michigan State got balls over, they didn't initially capitalize. They made a team throw, missed, made a third throw to give Grand Valley a shot clock. They would love a similar outcome on their end now because Grand Valley, if they miss on the team throw, they can get balls back, they can protect themselves. So Grand Valley has to capitalize on this throw here out of the gate. We'll see what they can do. I would say their top two arms, you know, Ben Smart, Owen Israels, they're not on there to make this play for them. So Matt Budai, probably the guy you're gonna lean on here. Ryan Paddock, Aiden Jacobs, those are your sophomores. Excuse me, that's disrespectful to Tyler Peach, who's out there right now, too. But 10 seconds left in this timeout. Michigan State with four players left. They are on the 10 clock. Grand Valley with six. Grand Valley was in a similar situation last point and threw some very untimely catches. Changing that around could be the difference for them. So here comes Grand Valley moving right to left. The team throw, and then they're. The late throw is right into Kramer's stomach. And now Grand Valley's on 10. Michigan State's on 10, but they bring in DQ McLean and Jack Gerling is lurking in the outline. So, so that's a problem. Like a lot of catchers that aren't as good as uh, Josh are gonna make that catch kind of laying down like that when it goes right into your stomach. So that's just another mistake. Matt Badai, he's just gonna reset it. Try to draw him up. Now him and Ryan Paddock gonna control the area. Their left side, bottom of the screen for the viewers. I'm not sure where that ball's over was coming from. I did not see. I did not see. I missed something there. there Either way, there's a ball's over. 19.30 to go, second half. Michigan State trying to come back and get another point. So anyway, long story short, Michigan State. Ball's over for Grand Valley, now ball's over for Michigan State. They've got the advantage. 
They're missing a few marquee arms, but there's talent up and down this Michigan State roster. We'll see what they dial up here, who they go at. It's going to be Paddock or Matt Budai. And Ryan Paddock is the target right there. He kind of jumped and it hit his stomach. He had a shot at the uh, he had a shot at the catch there, but so Grand Valley on ten, Michigan State on ten. Aiden Jacobs with a throw, pop ball, play on though. Under 19 to go here now. We'll get synced back up with the official game clock. Matt Budai draws a throw. Aiden Jacobs retaliates from the middle towards the side. Ooh. Josh Kramer buzzing the tower there, just missing wide of Matt Budai. Matt's a pretty good catcher. Aiden had a key catch earlier, so we'll see. That's what's, that's what's probably going to save Grand Valley if they can come out of this. Michigan State, they've got numbers. They've got ball advantage. There it was. Now Aiden Jacobs, the lone Laker left. Michigan State looking to put an exclamation on this one. Kramer smartly doesn't go for that play. That's, he doesn't need to. They've got five on one. He can be a little more risk averse here. Aiden Jacobs with the throw. That's about as safe as you can go. Good block by the freshman from Michigan State there. It's Van Fleet there. Plays a lot of the middle there. Him and DQ kind of play the middle a little bit with Barry Butler and um, Aiden just gets taken out. We're getting some comments about the ball's over. I'm not quite sure what what went on there. I, I didn't see any sort of break in the action. I thought they were trading throws and then suddenly a ball's over. So um, Michigan State, the benefactor of that one, but so you got to tip your cap. Like they're just never out of a game. Um, it's three nothing. And like Grand Valley's put them to the test in these last two points and Michigan State just continues to find a way. For those of you just tuning in, thank you again for joining us. This is our marquee matchup, number five Grand Valley hosting number one Michigan State. Uh, third matchup of the day, Grand Valley taking on the Wisconsin Platteville Pioneers in their game number one. Beat them 7-0. Michigan State follows suit by beating Wisconsin Platteville 8-0. And now they, these two juggernauts face off and Michigan State getting the better of it so far. Getting a lot of, uh, a lot of comments about the balls over, whether or not it was legit. Um, the refs made their call. You got to respect it. Grand Valley, uh, Michigan State capitalized. Got to tip your cap. They made the play when they had to. But now, now that it's 3 nothing, under 18 to go, clock's a factor. Grand Valley may have to kind of throw out the initial strategy and just play, play fast and play loose. And Thomas Anders starts him off here. And Michigan State didn't need the help, but they won the run up that time. Grand Valley had actually won the run-up, really, if you think about it, the last couple points. Uh, that helped them get Michigan State whittled down, but now Michigan State gets the run-up, and Alec Gonzalez gets taken out, and Alec Dean gets taken out by Tyler Peach. Tyler Peach has been lethal with the cross throw here. So, Grand Valley now, Ben Smart going to lead the charge, flanked by Walcott. That ball bounced up. So no catch there. Owen Israels with a throw. Vito out retaliated. Nobody home. Now Grand Valley will retreat to the baseline. Oh, Gutierrez had one right in the bread basket and just couldn't haul it in there. Barry Butler throws across. Budai counters him. Nobody home on either throw. So we've seen this story before. Shoe was on the other foot last year at MDC. Grand Valley was up 3-0. Michigan State came back to force overtime. Can Grand Valley return the favor? Hurst Simpson blocking it in himself isn't going to help Grand Valley's cause there. Owen Israels couldn't get the ball. Waiting for help. All right. Grand Valley's still playing hard. Now 
not connecting on a whole heck of a lot of throws right now, but they still got still got a lot of their better players in. They need to make something happen here soon if they're going to come back. For, if you're Michigan State, you can play a little more risk averse. And you can, Ben Smart gets taken out by the freshman, who then gets countered after that. So Fidua having himself a pretty good day. Took out Ben Smart, then he got countered. Grand Valley down to seven players on their side. Matt Budai with a throw, and he catches Barry Butler, who just kind of threw a change up there. All right, Grand Valley with eight players now. Michigan State also with eight. Michigan State with a 3-0 lead, so they can they can play a little safer. Erling and Budai both, both throw past each other. DQ through one and then Owen returned the favor. Nobody home on any of those. Michigan State kind of playing their neutral zone game here where they won't let Grand Valley really off the back line. Uh, Grand Valley hasn't really tried to come up a ton. Here they come, but again, another kind of long throw. Trade, 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 and Mason Smith makes a long throw at Josh Kramer. And you might as well not throw anywhere near his catch radius because he's going to look for him every time. All right. So that brought in Alec Dean. So that's another big arm for Michigan State. Marks makes the throw, returned by Pope. And Pope gets, nope, the throw evaded Pope and took out Walcott. No, no, no. Then Walcott should be in then too. So we'll see. Okay, Grand Valley down to five players. Michigan State, Marks will make the throw. Owen returns, kind of throws cross. Some trades there, nothing doing yet. Michigan State, very content to keep the pace nice and slow. Use up every ounce of that shot clock. And when Israel's at the throw, Arnold's gonna return suit. Kind of clapped his hands like a bad throw, but there's no reason to put it anywhere near him right now when you're just kind of making it. Matt Budai with a long throw. They're going to try to run him down. Owen Israels gets taken out on the team throw at the top of your screen there. Well-timed team throw, getting him backpedal in there. Tyler Peets with a long throw. Terrible evades it. DQ with a shot clock, kind of reset throw there, bails him out with a second left on the clock. Aaron Pope makes a nice throw in the middle. And he immediately drops, he knows it's coming. Let's at least try to get a catch. So, Grand Valley's best shot to get back into this is catching. If you're Michigan State, you play a little risk averse, you wait for those team throws now. Good counter and then another counter. A lot of counter throws, and if also if you're Michigan State, because you have such a player advantage right now, you're content with these trades. You've still got seven guys on the court to Grand Valley's three. The math checks out on that one. Ryan Paddock gets low for the catch. Got to bring in Alec Gonzalez. Alec Gonzalez, the senior, so that brings in some much needed experience and a fresh arm. Six to four, player advantage, Michigan State, moving left to right. Alec Dean wide of Matt Budai, safe spot. It's gonna be Alec Gonzalez making a throw. Got that a little high, but split Arnold and Marks there, so it's safe. I think Grand Valley's gonna try to just see if they can get Michigan State to make a couple mistakes. They're really gonna have to try to make catches to get back into this. Michigan State thought Alec blocked it into himself, looked clean to me from here. I'm also twice as far away from the action as they are, so. Matt Budai throws a long cross. Now no count for Grand Valley, down to one ball. Little miscommunication. Still no shot clock. Uh, Ale Gonzalez misses the catch. No reason for Pope to go up that far by himself there. A wise pullback. 
He'll cross, Kramer's gonna charge, pump, then the late throw. Bounced in front of him. Matt Budai with a long throw, splits the Michigan State line, and now Josh Kramer is gonna come up. He'll make a solo throw in between Paddock and Budai. I mean, Pope makes the throw in front of Marks. Ten and a half minutes to go, second half. Michigan State hanging on to a three nothing lead here. Threatening to open the lead to four. Not gonna be a legal throw by Ryan Paddock. And Adam Arnold gets taken out on the cross, looked like by Matt, Matt Dubai there, so Budai, excuse me. And now they've got five balls on their side for Grand Valley, so they'll be able to protect themselves. The question is, are the arms left on the court enough? Can they throw their way through this? Throws to a shot clock, and now both teams will be on the 10 there. Alec Dean got to throw close enough to Paddock to reset it. Matt Budai in front of Marks. Return fire by Kramer. All right, so both teams kind of playing risk adverse here. Grand Valley knows they cannot afford a mistake. Oh my gosh, Matt Budai with two giant kills. Takes out Kramer and Van Fleet, then evades the throw from Alec Dean. And suddenly you've got Budai and Pope against Marks, Dean, and I apologize that I don't have this freshman's name. I think that's Rademacher. So Grand Valley desperately trying to close the gap here. Budai resets the clock. All right. It's gonna be Dean. Alec Dean through, Pope returns fire to reset the clock. We've got two of the more elusive players for Grand Valley right now. Oh, Budai was looking for one there and just misses. That's a nice dodge by the freshman from Michigan State. Oh, that's a catch all day for Pope if he wants it, but it's so hard to drop two balls. When you've got them like that, you can protect yourself very easily. Pope's gonna come up, low throw on Dean, that's a safe spot. He's got no choice but to block it. All right, so Grand Valley has six balls on their side to Michigan State's four, and, and Pope misses the catch. He's shaking his head. So Matt Budai's gonna have to, Matt Budai's gonna have to make a play here. Looks like Gutierrez, the sophomore, is first in the queue. Marks is going to come from the middle. Right, so they kind of throw right down. Oh, Mabudai is extremely elusive there. He's going to just need to throw a safe one and kind of get back. All right. Now, Budai knows that those aren't reset throws. I think he wants them to sort of throw because he's a good enough catcher and I think he knows that's how he's going to get out of this. All right, so Matt, Matt Budai, the lone wolf right now, the lone Laker, I should say. Oh, he went down, he wanted that one. That was just wide enough in the mark to where the Michigan State player did not bite. Marks throws, keeps it low. You worry about Matt Budai's stamina just a little bit here. He's been alone for a few minutes now. How much longer can he keep this up? He's down to three balls. If he throws one more, he won't have a shot clock. That's probably why he threw some balls earlier, just to get him out of his zone. So he said, I can throw and then wait, force them to throw. Alec Dean being smart, keeping it off his body there. Matt Budai just kind of throws one in no man's land there. Oh, Matt Budai, that's what he wanted all game. Nobody home on that one, he just misses the catch, so.
Looks like they went to a running clock because it has gone to four point spread now. So under six to go now. Grand Valley down four nothing at home to Michigan State. Michigan State sending yet another message to the rest of the league. Michigan State's already number one in the power rankings. They're undefeated on the season. And they're just, they have a take no prisoners attitude right now. If you're Grand Valley, there's not enough time to win this game, but I think you have to get a point. You have to prove that you can get a point from this team. We'll see what they opt for. They look a little, a little out of it right now, but I think, uh, I think if you're Grand Valley, you gotta try to get a point, prove that you can get one from them and build off of it before MDC. So, five minute running clock, Michigan State up for nothing. In Allendale, Grand Valley Gauntlet 9. Thank you for sticking with us here today. We do have one more game after that. After this, we'll pit the Lakers against the Pioneers again. Hope everybody's enjoyed this uh, full day of dodgeball in this production. Again, we apologize for uh, apologize for some of the hiccups early on and then the disconnect, but thank you for sticking with us, coming back, engaging with us in the in the chat. Um, if you could share the post for the last game, that'd be great. Toss us a like. Please subscribe to the NCDA page. We'd love to get our uh, likes and our subscribers over a thousand. All right, head wrap Thomas Zandro will start him off again and DQ gets taken out and Billy Butler gets taken out. Grand Valley playing with a lot of energy now out of this one. So, Gerling, Dean. And ben Hackman gets taken out by, by Ben Smart. And Owen Israel is going to keep the front line going. Just misses wide and Nick Fidoa. They should probably hold off on throw it against him. He's had hands all day today, reeling them all in. Grand Valley playing on the back line. Their guys with balls have a step right now. And that's a catch by Michigan State that brings Butler right back in. So they got him out early and he's right back on the court. Now what you want to see if you're a Laker fan right now. Throws from the middle. Aaron Pope returns fire to reset the clock. Nick Fidoa then throws. Ben Smart's got to wait for help. He's got some trailers coming. Owen oh, Israel throws at the top. Ben pumped like he was going to do his patented cross. And he just kind of snags one from Kramer and they both smile. Kramer kind of shovel past one there and Two and a half minutes left, second half. Michigan State in control, four nothing right now. They're content to just kind of bleed this one out. The Grand Valley, they're trying desperately to get a point. A couple of freshmen, Mason Smith and Eli Walcott take out fellow freshman Nick Fidoa. I think, I think they've had enough of him today. Salisbury and Arnold at the top. Looks like throw might come from one of them here. Reset, comes near Gonzalez. First Simpson, nice block by Mason Smith. Slightly built, can get nice and low, quick hands. DQ, the lone senior left on the court for Michigan State, flanked by some underclassmen, gonna try to get these guys some playing time and just control it. Valuable experience for the guys flanking him right now, and he knows it. Aiden Jacobs with a throw, and then countered by DQ. Almost made the catch, couldn't reel it in. DQ with a good spot there, just keeps it right off his body. DQ does play the game pretty calm. He's always pretty cool, calm and collected there in the middle, whether they're up, they're down. Announcer's curse, I give him praise and he gets hit on the back of the foot there. Well, Owen Israels takes out Adam Arnold. He's 100% out and Xander was all over that, so. 
Ben Smart trying to bait a throw. Good hold by the Michigan State player. And Owen Israel finishes the job there. So Matt Budai didn't think he was out. Tried to shovel it towards him. Unnecessary. So Michigan State down to three freshmen. Barabel is one of them. Becca Chappelle talked him up quite a bit as well pre-game to me. So Michigan State never devoid of talent. 30 seconds left. Grand Valley desperately just trying to get a point here. Not sure why they're not playing high line yet here. 20 seconds now, 22. Yep, Ben Smart now screaming, stay at the line. Yeah, they just need to go if they want to get a point. But Mason Smith makes a throw, not a throw by Michigan State. Under 10 to go, that'll do it, folks. Michigan State going to walk out of here, come into Allendale, walk out 2-0 on the day. The total point spread of 12-0. Michigan State again puts the league on notice. We're not going anywhere. 